That's a freaking huge post. Yeah, that power pole there is smaller than that post. Yeah, that thing is huge. Notice that he's not just horsing that around by hand. That post probably weighs 200 pounds, pretty easy. But if anybody could lift that post, it would probably be Rory. How in the world are you not, your legs are purple. They're tanned. They're tanned. That's not tan, that's cold. No if I put trousers on, it'd be too warm. That's your blood crying for help. Yeah, you're in shorts and I'm already like, need a warmer coat. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, guys. No, we're not in Florida, despite the fact that this crazy man right here is wearing shorts. You can see his legs are purple and that's because they're crying for help. <laughs> so we're gonna be fencing today with Rory Sampson with Sampson Fencing in Lockerbie, Scotland. So stay tuned, come along with us and let's see how he builds fence. That thing slaps. Now, did you say you did pre-drill that? Yeah, pre-drilled, yeah. So, pre-drilled about five foot down, but it's already been cut up because they were a full length pole, you know, so there's no treatment on top here anyway. Uh -huh. So we'll just give it a wee cut there. And... Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but what he's doing is he's leaning that into the turn because he's going to wrap the wire around. That just kind of preloads it a little bit. So the wire is pulling back on it. So it's already kind of cocked. It's cocked a little bit into the lead so that as he stretches that wire, it works to his advantage. It's drilled all the way down, still trying to get more stuff out of it. So I keep doing it two or three times and it sticks to the drill. That's why I keep keeping going. He's got a lot more work to do than Peter down in Essex. This is this is a lot more of a process, you can't just knock him in. Job. Pretty heavy. I'm not. I'm not. I like my back. That weight's 500 kilos. They're half a ton. Half a ton. And you can feel it like everywhere. It's gonna be almost six feet in the ground when it's over. Just think. And he already got the hole done. We were already almost there. This is pointless. We'll Just put it in time. three feet and tamp it good. It, overkill. This is overkill. You don't need this. Oh. Waste of money. What Let's a waste go. of time. Let's go home. Let's, I've seen enough. Oh, I'm gonna drive the post. So he tells me. I got that much more to go. He's gonna trust me with those other six inches. I can't screw it up. I did all right, I did all right. It was all the extra weight. It was all the extra weight, yeah. On your arm. Yeah. You really threw that lever forward with authority. I did. I would love to tell you what he's going to do in some sort of just amazing Scottish accent, but I'm not going to try. What I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do it in an English accent, like American English. He's going to put a tie back in. He prefers the tie backs 
over the breast block because he feels like that just holds better. Now, breast block would be right up against the post. The tie block is going to be out further, and then they'll tie it back with some wire. So he's going to use this heavy wire and tie it back so as that post tries to go this way, it's actually got to rip that one out as well. So, like that post is crazy strong already. That's a 10, 11 inch post drove five and a half feet in the ground. That thing's not going anywhere. But. So what he's doing is he took another block and he took that block and put it on top of the post so that way he can beat that post deeper in the ground to get that wire to get tight. To keep that post from pulling back the other way. <laughs> Go on, D. Small force, yeah. I'm driving up for the back I've got quite a big spike in the cap here. Like, I'm not afraid to move this thing everywhere. I know a lot of guys scared to move it in case they bend stuff, especially with the whole mass bending, pedal arm and stuff. Because I'm, I can move boulders. <laughs> but I've got quite a big spike. This is still the original cap, seven years old. Put the other one over here as well. Rory, it looks like maybe somebody from Florida has been in Scotland building fence. <laughs> because that post is in the ground all of about maybe a foot. foot. Yep. Maybe a foot. Maybe some people do fencing over here like they do in Florida. <laughs> I thought that wasn't me. Is that what you guys do if you were doing wood? Or do you drive them straight in? No, we, we would angle it like that, yeah. yeah sure. We haven't gotten into doing a lot of this. It's like I say, it's mostly pipe. Right, so if you're doing pipe, are you straight in as well? Or an angle? angle. Yeah, yeah, back it yeah, out at yeah. an angle, yep. Yeah. Yeah. What would you put in for your block, generally? Mm, I'd probably be either two and seven eighths or four inch. Aye, aye, about two or three foot in there. Yeah, probably straight. four. Yeah, half four, yeah. Let's go and put some posts in the ground now. Let's do it. <laughs> So this is something I have not yet seen before. Apparently it was developed in New Zealand. These are called Clip-X posts. And so they are specifically designed for X-wire, X which is a specific field fence, woven wire fence, whatever you want to call it. And so it'll fit exactly inside of these clips. So you'll knock these off and you won't have to clip it and it'll just hold it there permanently forever. Uh, the top one I think is a high tensile wire and then the netting fence will be, go on the bottom of it. No, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Hey, I did this before once, I did this once. I can do it faster. I totally got this. We're going all the way, all the way. Ah, it's getting a little harder. Man, there's gotta be an easier way. Is there an easier way? I've got two options, two easier ways, yep. That is some freaking hard, that's hard ground. 500 kilos, that's a half a ton that it took to get that hole poked in the ground. That's insane. I'm impressed with how hard that ground is. And then that thing just opens up. And then, no, I can't get it out. You don't even have to do anything. It just, it's that easy. I'm cold, I'm not gonna lie. Like my hands are cold, 
I'm a little cold up here. My legs are fine. I could probably pull off the shorts, but the rest of me is cold. This is Scottish, Scottish brew. I asked them what it tasted like and they said it tastes like nothing. And of course my response was, I'll be the judge of that. So here we go. He's over there laughing. Hmm. Well, he's kind of right. It kind of tastes like nothing, nothing else. It's, it's a little bit fruity. It's different. Maybe like some, like almost a mix of an orange slash cream soda or something. Let's let Dan have a bit. Oh, shiver me timber. They're Scottish, not pirates. <laughs> Sorry. That's amazing. What does it taste like? I don't know. But it's like a mix of orange slash cream soda or something, almost. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like some 7-Up, some Pedialyte. <laughs> I've never drank Pedialyte. What are you doing drinking Pedialyte? For you, I recommend Ensure. Ensure is what we should be drinking for you. Like it. We're trying to figure out what it tastes like. <laughs> girders. Huh? Girders. Gir girders? <laughs> tastes like girders? Me <laughs> Oh, the girders. So the theory is, I asked him about this, I said that post is a lot bigger than the bit on that drill, but apparently they drill enough of a hole that it'll actually break the rock. And he said one day some farmer came up to him and asked him what they were drilling tree roots. He said, no, I'm drilling rocks. And so they got the post driven down there, couldn't get it all the way down, and he had to pull it up with the driver and it pulled out this big old rock with it. So it sticks them in the rock. So what they're doing behind me is they're going back and putting in the intermediate posts. So we talked about those bigger posts. They're, they've already done the bigger posts. They did that with the big driver. They're putting in the smaller intermediate posts in between, and they're using two different drivers. So they're using something very similar to like the Rhino or the Ready driver. And then Rory is using an air powered driver, a pneumatic driver. But apparently after they've drilled that small little hole, that's enough to get the rocks broke out of the way and that, those things will drive right to, into those rocks and they won't have any issues. So pretty incredible. And if you're thinking about some of our no dig fence systems, maybe look at this driver or one like it because it's pretty easy to pack as you can see him doing it by themselves now. And that's always one of the concerns we have is having that weight. So they're able to drive all these posts and that is, I would call it an extremely aggressive driver compared to the gas powered drivers. They go to town. And there's several different adapters available for this. And I think you can probably make one for Postmasters or whatever else. He says that they actually put in three inch wood posts with this. So that's how aggressive it can be. What a system. That's pretty cool. It's freaking tight. This is a dead man or an anchor post that he's driven to help hold this post down because we've got a dip. And he drove this from clear up here all the way to that grade without pre-drilling or doing anything special. So that's how powerful that driver is. What we're doing right now is we're comparing the Marchant driver to the Rhino driver. We're gonna do a drive off. See which one can get it down to depth first. Go! I feel like I won. I was on top of a rock. It was a big rock. I don't know what they're doing. I'm over here working my butt off and they're just over there playing. I do have I do have one serious question. Yep. So sir, we're in Scotland. There's this thing called the Loch Ness monster. Real <laughs> or not real? There's a big debate on it. I think it was real, probably. 
years and years ago, but it's not there now. <laughs> what if I had a baby? Maybe that have a baby. <laughs> Used to be real. I reckon it was real years and years ago, but um, you heard it from the man. <laughs> Well, I've never seen one like that before. Custom made. <laughs> Custom made. <laughs> Just there, let it sit on it. <laughs> so I just like for all the differences when I'm looking at things and like why don't we do smart things like this Instead of our stupid chain latches that everybody does, this just keeps the animals from being able to open that. So it's two-handed. Silly things like that interest me because we're not doing that. Anyhow, this is what that fence is gonna look like when it's all said and done. Now, a lot of this stuff on this fence was repurposed material. So this is old guardrail. These are old beams that came off of a building. And you're probably gonna say, hey, you know what? That's gonna rust. Yeah, like in 50 more years, it'll finally rust through that, but it's gonna last an incredibly long time. Rust doesn't happen overnight all the way through thick I-beams like that. So we didn't talk about it, but here you can see, I'm still a little winded from running up that hill. So he does three line posts, three of these smaller posts, and then he'll do one of the larger posts. And you can see the size difference in this versus this post. So these are quite a bit heavier duty. And he does that just for strength, but let me just be the first to tell you, this is incredibly tough. When you get a nice tight wire conjoined with these posts and good strainers at each end, this is still a great fence. They use this because it's a lot easier to get and more economical, but still better than like a T-post fence. And there's no clips to put on, so they don't have to worry about clips or clips falling off. It's just a really good setup. First time I've ever seen this. I like it. I don't know what you think, but this is pretty cool, I think. Hopefully you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about how Rory Sampson here in Lockerbie, Scotland installs his fence, a little bit more about the Clipex fence posts and these giant freaking strainers that he uses uh, and the equipment to use. So we really appreciate you having us out and yep. let's go get some food and warm up. Yep, thank you. I mean, you put some pants on first, please. <laughs> You'll see me in pants tonight. <laughs> I'm Mark with SWI. I'm Dan. I'm Rory with Sampson Fencing and you have a good dang day.